Hey, what's going on? My name is Alex Ramey with DJ Cut Entertainment, and today I wanna to go over some tips to help you choose the DJ for your wedding. Today, I'm gonna to go over my tips of choosing the best DJ for your wedding. Do I think I'm the best DJ for your wedding? I have no idea. It really depends on your unique style and what you value and what do you think is important. So it's really independent to your brand, your style, how you envision your day. So the first thing that you should do is research, research, research. Uh, I tell my clients, getting married is like going to college and studying for midterms. Do your research. Uh, go find them on Wedding Wire, The Knot, Google, Facebook. Check with your venue. If they're on their vendor site, there's a good chance that you're dealing with a professional before you actually reach out to them and set up your consultation. One thing you wanna find out is what is the process to booking them for your wedding? So how our hiring process works is you book a meeting with us, whether that be an in-person meeting, a phone call, or a video chat, and then we go over all the details and your envision of how you see your day going. Uh, once we get off that phone call, we'll send over a proposal for you. And this is where you can see to pay the retainer, uh, view the contract, and you can view the terms and conditions. And then you can also see the package that you're ordered and then also we send over a one sheet that has all our additional prices because sometimes people add lighting later on, videography, photo booths. So it really just depends on each client. And this gets the ball rolling so you can look at all the information and decide before booking. Once you guys have booked with us, uh, then you guys get access to our ceremony form, your reception form, the timeline, music requests, and you guys can start the planning process. When we get to about 30 to 60 days out from your wedding, this is when uh, we set up a site walkthrough and hopefully meet with some of the other vendors and go over some of the more finer details of your wedding. Uh, from there, we have a meeting that is seven days out from your wedding. This is usually a phone call. And then we go over all the final details so we know everything that we need the day of your event. So when we get there, we know where to set up and how to execute everything as planned. One of the biggest things that I feel that you need to figure out right away, uh, whether this is the DJ to the bride or the bride to the DJ, is style of communication. And I try to figure out what each client's style of communication is, whether that's text messages, whether that's phone calls, emails. I have some people that prefer sending me messages on Facebook or Instagram. So it's really important to find out what style of communication so you guys can communicate back and forth really well. Usually I like email and I'll send a text message as soon as I send an email. So that way I know that they've got it. So one is figuring out the style of communication. Then when you're actually meeting with them um, in the consultation, it's like an interview process. You guys are interviewing each other to make sure your guys' style of communication matches. And you want to get with somebody that your conversations flow really, really well um, because this is dramatically going to affect the DJ on the day of your event. There have been times where I've gotten a consultation meeting. I'm sure that they were a great club. And I just felt that our communication styles didn't match. We were having a hard time communicating and going back and forth via email. And so I just cut that off right there. I just felt that it wouldn't lead to a successful wedding. And I don't want a dissatisfied customer when it comes to the wedding, because this is a once in a lifetime event and we have one chance to get it right. And I don't like any rough edges. I want everything to flow smoothly because it's just going to make both their lives easy. So one thing is find out who are you hiring? Are you hiring the DJ? Or are you hiring the company? With my company personally, in that consultation, you are going to talk to the DJ that shows up at your wedding. By chance, if we have a consultation, you guys take a while to get back with us and then we already get booked. We usually try to send out an email saying, hey, someone else is interested in your wedding day and we give you guys a heads up. If we get booked and then we need to send out another DJ, you guys know beforehand, I never have a client send a deposit or sign the contract without knowing who their DJ is for the day of their wedding. So one thing you want to find out is if your DJ is insured and what their policy is with drinking. This is a wedding and yes, it's a party, but we handle it like a professional. We do not put up with uh, any drinking on the job. 
Um, it's fun to party and drink and stuff, but just not with us when we're dealing with a wedding. There are game time decisions that you need a sober person to make and just people start drinking and then emotions get involved and we just knock that off the table. Um, we are insured up to a million dollars. A lot of venues that we work with need to require to see that even before we uh, put foot on the location. Um, when you get a client login, our insurance is listed. So if you need to send that out to anybody, you're more than welcome to download that and it's right there for your convenience. We really recommend booking a DJ that has multiple service, whether it be DJ and videography, DJ and photo booth, DJ and lighting. The more services you can kind of get under one company, this is what it does. A lot of times when we get to venues, I try to make a point to reach out to different vendors and start that line of communication. Hey, how are you doing? Because I see people and they just get like this as soon as they get to the wedding and they don't talk to each other unless they need something from one another. So I try to communicate as soon as I can uh, to eliminate this. Now, a lot of times you'll have a DJ and then you have a videography company. The videography, you know, needs to tap into the DJ soundboard. And some DJs don't like this or don't allow this. Uh, I've seen at weddings before where we're starting the speeches and the videography company is off eating and they're missing some of the speeches. So the more services you can get under one vendor, this just eliminates that chance of them not communicating together. Um, so we do multiple services with us. Uh, sometimes people will get a DJ and a photo booth. And I love for me and my marketing to get lots of photos. So I'll get on the microphone and remind people, hey, the DJ booth is over there. Um, and so the photo booth company doesn't need to come over to us and remind us or let us know. I know all the announcements that I need to make and it just keeps this streamlined and that open line of communication takes one variable off the table. And that's one less thing that you have to worry about. One thing you want to ask is what is the DJ's mixing style? How does he play music? Does he just play song end to end? Does he beat match the songs? Uh, do you play a lot of remixes? So you want to communicate the style of DJ that you want. Maybe get some examples of some past weddings that they've done. You know, I've, I do nightclubs, I do big festivals, and I do weddings. I DJ them completely different. It really just depends on my clients. Sometimes I have younger clients, they're millennials that want a lot of remixes. Still keep it classy for a wedding, but they're more upbeat. They like some trap music. Um, we'll say that for the end of the wedding, but it really just depends on your style and what you want. I have some other weddings that are more of like a country wedding or a classic rock, and I'm not really doing any remixes or beat matching or, or mixing music. So find out what the style of DJ is and how you want them to play the music because it's usually not just original songs back to back. You want to ask your DJ, how do they handle dance requests? Uh, do they allow requests? Do they allow guests to come up and make requests? Do they just play off of the music that they gave them? How do you get requests to them? So there's one thing you want to ask them because this can be a make or break uh, situation. For us, um, guests are more than welcome to come up and request songs as long as it's edited and we have it in our library, then we're more than happy to play it for them. So find out how your DJ takes requests and if this is something that they do. One of the biggest things that I like to do is make behind the scenes videos or what are known as wedding vlogs. So you can get an exact replication of what to expect on your wedding so you can see behind the scenes what our photo booth looks like, what our uplighting looks like, what our dance floor looks like, any setup you guys can see. So I definitely recommend reading reviews, but more importantly, getting some video examples and some video testimonies so you have a better idea of what you're gonna get. I mean, anybody can write a review, but when you're watching on video, um, it's just a more accurate representation of what to expect on your wedding day. You're going to want to ask your DJ, uh, do they do a site visit or a walkthrough? Will they come to the rehearsal? Because these are things that can be very important to you. Uh, with our company, if I haven't worked at the venue before, then we'll more than likely do a site walkthrough depending on you know how far it is uh, from our location. Um, even if I've worked there before, I like to do a site walkthrough about 60 to 30 days out so I can see where I'm setting up, where the dance floor is going to be located, where the bar is going to be located. And this will give us a good representation of where you expect everything to be. We usually don't go through the rehearsal because we have all the details and everything that we need. So for me, the two biggest questions you probably want to ask is, what is your MC style and how are you going to pack my dance floor? Because this is the majority of the DJ's job. I feel that the MC portion is a little bit more important uh, than the music. 
getting a dance party started is really going to set the mood for your event. Um, so we do a little game to get everybody out on the dance floor. And that's kind of the icebreaker. So you're going to see, hey, what are you going to do to get people dancing? Because the more people are dancing, the longer that they're usually going to stay. So this is a, a good portion. What are you going to do? What do you have up your sleeve that you're going to get people dancing? Uh, break that ice. Uh, what's your style of music? How do you format your music? Uh, what I mean by this is we usually start with older music in the beginning and then as the night goes on, get a little bit newer. And then we try to stick to high energy sing-alongs to get everybody up involved and engaged. I'll usually look around my room after the first two or three songs and see who's sitting. How can I rotate the room and get them up there and get them engaged? Um, it might be a slow song. Uh, might be a classic sing-along. So it really just depends on your guest and what type of stuff we have going on that's really getting them uh, interactive and engaged. One thing you want to ask is, is this your full-time job or is this a weekend hobby for you? And the reason why I say asking this is not as apparent, but somebody that does this for a profession, they're going to have a professional approach to your wedding. They're going to be working on your wedding all week long versus just trying to fit it in on the weekends. And they're going to have professional equipment because they do weddings every single weekend. And the equipment they're using needs to be up to professional standards because, you know, some of the cheaper equipment when you're just doing weddings on the weekend are as to the high standards. So they're not going to last as long uh, with our company. We use our equipment for about two years and then we swap it out for brand new technology to make sure that we're staying up with, you know, the latest trends and make sure that our gear sounds good. And so this is kind of the difference of kind of like a trick question if you ask, hey, do you do this every weekend? Because the level of professionalism that you're going to get across the board is going to be vastly different. Now, when you're going through the dating process is what I mean by this is when you're in your consultation, you guys are kind of feeling each other out and you're seeing what works with each other. And one of the things that you want to try to get a hint on is how flexible this person is. You want to get with people, whether it's a DJ, a planner, I guess kind of any wedding vendor, you want to see how flexible they are with some stuff. Hey, if my you know wedding starts a half an hour late, how are you going to handle this? And so you're going to want to know somebody that that's going to be able to, to take charge, but also be flexible when it comes to certain things. That's going to really give you a good idea of how they're going to work well with others because it's all these vendors coming together and you're going to have to have some flexibility, but not break kind of mentality. And so you want people that can work well with each other, but still be flexible, but know when they need to be stern and to give you a professional product. Thank you guys again for watching this video. I hope it is helpful in some tips and suggestions when trying to choose a DJ for your wedding. Thank you guys very much.